Hey crazies, say you've got a bowling ball in a boat. As you look deep into the water beneath, the darkness beckons. In your soul, you feel an overwhelming urge to drop the ball. Does the water level go up, go down, or stay the same? We'll get into it after the intro. Feel free to pause and think if you need to. Why would we have a bowling ball in a boat? Who doesn't have a bowling ball in their boat? Anyway, I used to frequently give this question to my intro physics students and their most common response was that the water level would go up. They'd say objects in water displace that water. So putting a bowling ball into water would displace it like anything else, raising the water level. But as it turns out, the water level can't go up if nothing enters the system. The bowling ball is already in the system, so that only leaves us with two options. Either the water level stays the same or it goes down. It stays the same, doesn't it? Actually, it depends on whether the bowling ball sinks or floats. Bowling balls can float? Yep. Any bowling ball under about 12 pounds or 5.5 kilograms will float on water. All the heavier ones sink. Let's take a look at the floaters first. <laughs> Poop jokes. Poop jokes. <laughs> You're such a dork. Here we have an analog for each item in our system. First, we'll fill up our lake with water. It's not a lake without water. Then our system begins with the boat in the water and the ball in the boat. We should mark the water level before we change anything. This is our new baseline. Then we take the ball out, carefully place it in the water and wait for everything to settle. Checking the water level again shows that it hasn't changed, which makes sense if you think about it. The ball is floating regardless. Afterward, it's floating on its own, but beforehand, it's using the boat to float. The water is still supporting the weight either way. And you can see that when you work out the math too. The before picture looks something like this. Everything is in what we call mechanical equilibrium, meaning the forces all balance each other. In this case, gravity pulls downward on the boat and the ball. That's their weight. There's also upward support from the water, which we call buoyancy or buoyant force. That buoyancy comes from the weight of the water itself. When you put something like a boat into water, it takes up space that used to be occupied by water. That water got pushed out of the way and ultimately upward above the original water line. But water also has weight and it's trying to fall toward the earth just like everything else. In the process, that water pushes back, resulting in an upward force on the boat. The two find an equilibrium though and this new water level becomes our new baseline. Now let's take a look at the after picture. When the ball is lifted out of the boat, the water level goes down, but then it goes back up when the ball is placed in the water. By the same exact amount? In this case, yes. We have two objects independently in equilibrium, but the physics works out the same. Each gets a buoyancy and each gets a weight. Adding everything together, we recover the same result we got before. Even though the displaced volume is a different shape, it's still the same amount of volume. So. What happens if you drop a 16 pound bowling ball instead? The ball will sink and the water level goes down. We'll swap for a steel ball so we guarantee it sinks. Just like before, we place the boat into the water and place the ball into the boat. <laughs> I'm gonna need a bigger boat. <laughs> it's not big enough. Nope. Uh -uh. Nope. It's tipping over. There we go. Hey, yo. Woo, there we go. Just a little bit of tape. Oh, I hate experimentation. All right, after some troubleshooting, we're using a bigger boat and some tape to hold the ball in the middle so it doesn't tip over. And bingo bango, it works. Hey, yo. Now we mark off our new baseline and then move the ball into the water. As you can see here, the water level went down. What makes this different from before? The ball went from floating to sinking. The boat may be able to support a 16 pound bowling ball, but the water can't. And that matters? Oh yeah, it's everything. The before picture looks just like it did with the floating ball. Gravity pulls downward on the boat and the ball, buoyancy pushes up. The only difference is that this ball is heavier, so the boat falls deeper into the water. The after picture is a bit trickier to figure out. A time honored physics tradition is to take a question like this to its extreme, just to see what happens. Let's take that bowling ball and compress its mass into a smaller space. Say it's compressed so much that it's the size of a dust particle. It's the same mass as the bowling ball, just with a tiny volume. 
When the particle is inside the boat, its weight uses the volume of the boat to displace water. But outside the boat, the particle barely displaces anything at all. It would be the same for a sinking bowling ball, just less dramatic. If less water is displaced, then the water level goes down. Though you should be careful with solutions like this. First, for the comparison to work, both the bowling ball and the extreme object have to sink. If you were to take the bowling ball and expand it instead, you'd quickly make an object that would float rather than sink, breaking the comparison. Another problem is that if you compress a bowling ball too much, the electrons will smash into the protons. You'll get neutronium. That's the stuff neutron stars are made of. If you put something like that into a lake, it'll explode, taking the lake and you with it. And there goes your experiment. We're better off working through it without any tricks. Like we said, the before picture looks like it did for the floating ball. But this time, we'll go the extra mile and solve for the displaced volume of water. You can see it depends on the mass of the boat, the mass of the ball, and the density of the water. This is what we're going to compare to our after picture. Once the ball falls all the way to the bottom of the lake, here's what the forces look like. Just like in the floating case, each gets a weight and each gets a buoyancy. However, the ball also has an upward push from the bottom of the lake. Because remember, the water couldn't entirely support it. The water gave it a valiant effort with its buoyancy, but it just wasn't enough. This upward push makes up the difference and brings the ball back into equilibrium. After you work through some algebra, you'll get the new displaced volume of water. This big term out front is just the displaced volume from when the ball was inside the boat. But now we have a second term and it's subtracted. That means the displaced volume after is less than the displaced volume before. The water level has gone down. Same conclusion, no tricks, just basic principles. What about when the ball was falling through the water though? You get a very similar result. This upward push from the lake floor would just be mass times acceleration instead. It's basically the same equation. But here's the super main ultimate point. Some bowling balls float on water and some of them sink. Any bowling ball 12 pounds or less will float. In which case, the water level stays the same because the water could support the ball either way. Any bowling ball 13 pounds or more will sink. In which case, the water level goes down because it takes more water to support the ball than it does to just let it sink. If you want to use some kind of trick to solve puzzles like this, that's fine, but you have to be careful. If you're unsure, just do it the more rigorous way. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. The doctor was wondering why there are multiple bright spots in our image of a black hole. Great question. Accretion disks aren't uniform. These three blobs are denser parts of the disk where it's hotter. The only reason this one looks brighter than the other two is because it's moving toward us. Anyway, thanks for watching. The lake demands sacrifice.